In this video I'm going to build an Arduino reaction timer. It's a sample application of using the Arduino along with an LCD display and some input outputs. The idea being is that when a message appears to tell you to press the button, the time until you press the button is calculated and that determines your reaction. This builds on several different circuits that I've built before. The first one was the mains PSU configuration which allowed us to connect a mains PSU to our breadboard and to get a clean supply from this. This and the other videos that are mentioned are linked at the end of this video so you can watch them afterwards. The next circuit that I'm building on is the Arduino on a breadboard. In this case we're not using the Arduino inside a shield, we're using it only on the breadboard. So we take the Arduino IC out, the AT Mega 328, out of the shield and we place it on the breadboard and using an external crystal we can drive an application. The next circuit is the display configuration where we connect it to a display module, an LCD display module. And in this case here you can see I've got a 20 by 4 display module and we're able to drive this directly without the need for a display shield directly from the Arduino. So here's the final application and you can see here that I'm using the Arduino to program this IC the final application doesn't need the Arduino shield at all. You can see that the display module is in the top right hand side. I've got the big button on the, in the middle on the right hand side which is the button that is our interface to this application. We only use one button for the whole interface. The application itself requires quite a bit of wiring. In the top and the middle we have the different components that we need to connect to our AT Mega IC and to the display. The first in the top middle is the big button and that's the button that we use to interact with the application. We press this to start the application running and we press it when we want to time our reactions. It's in pull down configuration so we have a 10k resistor tying it to ground and the other side is connected to plus VCC. Next below it we have an LED with a, a current limiting 100 ohm current limiting resistor and this is the LED that lights when it's time for us to press the button. We also have a 10k potentiometer and you will have seen this in the LCD tutorial. This allows us to set the contrast on the display. On the right hand side at the top we have our New Haven display. It's an interesting display in that it has an extra two pins. It has 18 pins compared to the displays we looked at before. These extra pins allow us to drive an RGB backlight which allows us to set the colour of the backlight according to three current limiting resistors. So pins 16, 17 and 18 are the red, green and blue channels of this New Haven display and you can see this in the pin assignment on the right hand side. In the middle we have our AT Mega 328 IC which we've taken out of the shield and placed on the breadboard. And below this then we have the reset button which is in pull up configuration and we have a 16 MHz crystal with two 22 picofarad load capacitors. So this is the circuit that we use to drive this entire application. On the bottom right hand side of the figure you also see the circuit that I've used to generate the power supply that we use for this application. One thing to remember is that the AT Mega 328P pinout is slightly different than what you would expect. If you look here, pins 11, 12, 13 and 14 are connected to the digital pins which go as the yellow wires to our display. Once we're fi finished our application, we've programmed our application, we can disconnect the Arduino shield. Then we can connect our 12 volt or 9 volt main supply. This goes in then and it's regulated to 5 volts by the voltage regulator on the left hand side. So our application starts up and you can see that the initial message that appears is reaction tester press button. So that's the application. When we want to run it then we can press the square, the black square button to start it. So it says ready and then after a random amount of time the message appears, the red LED comes on and you have to press the button as quickly as possible. So my reaction time there was 202 milliseconds. So in this case, watch the red LED on the left hand side. You'll see that when we press the button again, again it prompts us, it keeps running forever. We can press button and then watch the red LED on the left hand side. After the random amount of time, it lights up and we press the button as quickly as we can. And this time I got it down to 191 milliseconds. 
So you saw in this example that the LED backlight on the display changes color as well and we have full control to change that into any color that we would wish. So that's the, that's the wiring of the breadboard and the application. Now onto the part, the intelligence of the application which is the code that I've written uh, using the Arduino environment. This is my source code for the Arduino reaction timer that uses an RGB LCD 16x2 character display. The first thing we do in this application is include liquidcrystal.h and you can see at arduino.cc in the tutorial section there's a tutorial on using this liquid crystal library. This library allows us to set up a liquid crystal display using one of four methods. In this case here I'm using the shortest method I've set RW to ground and I'm using pin 13 for RS, pin 12 for enable and pins 5, 6, 7 and 8 for data pins D4 to D7. Now this display can be driven with 4 bits or 8 bits. 4 bits will allow us to display all the A to Z characters and all the usual characters so we can get away using only 4 bits. And this particular display has um, a, backlit a backlit LED that you can change the colour of. It's an RGB backlight. And using pulse switch modulation allows us to choose any particular colour we'd like for this backlit colour display. In this case here I've chosen three pulse width modulation pins, 11, 10 and 9 on the Arduino and we can use these to drive the red, green and blue channels of this RGB LED backlight. We also have an LED pin which is the red LED to the left of the board and this is the LED that's going to signify when you have to press the button uh, to stop the counting from counting. The next thing we have is our button itself. The button is the button we use to interact with the reaction timer and we've wired this to pin 3. The states then that I need for this particular application, the first one is my random delay time. This is going to be a value between 0 seconds and 10 seconds. So it's going to be stored as a long because it's the number of milliseconds that the, the timer will wait for. We have a prepare state and an is timing state. And you'll see in the code below, these are the state to say, are we in the introduction stage inviting the person to press the button? Or are we timing the person between when it the, tells them to press the button and when they actually press the button? So these states allow us to decide where in the application we are. We also have two values, our timer start milliseconds and our timer end milliseconds. And we're going to use these values to decide on the total time that it's taken the person to press the button. So the difference between the end millis and the start millis is the total time to press the button. Next, I've created a function and because I want to do this several times I've decided to add it as a function. So here I've got a function called set display RGB, this is the backlight RGB values and we pass a red, green and blue value as three integers. Then we use the analog write which is a function that works with PWM pins and we write the red value to the red PWM pin, the green value to the green PWM pin, and so on. Now, because we've set it up as a function, set display RGB, we just pass the three values, and we want to call this several times, so it's good practice to set up as a function. The next thing we have is the standard Arduino setup function, which happens only once when the application starts. The first thing we do here is we want to say that the red LED is on an output pin, we want to also say that the button is on an input pin and that just allows these those two functions to work correctly. We set the display, the backlight display to be white and this is 255, 255, 255 is white. So that's then passed up to the set display function up here setting the value of the backlight to be white. We also then set up our LCD as a 16 by 2, 16 rows by, oh, sorry, 16 columns by 2 rows. And then we set up our random seed and I'm using a random number generator and to ensure that every time we start this application that we get different sequence of, of delays we use an unconnected pin to seed the random sequence. So when we do an analog read pin 0 in this case here the analog pin 0 has nothing attached to it so we use that to provide the random seed value. So that means that we're going to essentially get a different sequence of random numbers, pseudo random numbers, every time we run this application. The final function we have is our loop function. This is the longest function. And the first part we have is the prepared state. And the prepared state is between this point here and, and this point here. Oops. 
And the prepare state is when we're in the situation where we're telling the person, we're providing the instructions for the person. So we're saying set the display, set the cursor to zero, zero, display reaction timer, say press button, this is to get us started. And when the person eventually decides to press the button, we read digital read uh, button pin equals true. The person has decided to press the button. We clear the display. We print up ready and get them ready to press the button. And then we have a random delay time. So we choose a random number between one and 10,000. So this is our, our zero to 10 seconds and that's our random delay time. Then we write, we say while the digital read the, the button pin is true. So while the person still has their finger on the button, on the, on the button, we wait. And that's just to make sure that we release the button before we start the timer timing. Finally, we set prepare state to false. We're finished this particular part. So by setting prepare state to be false, we can be sure that this function here isn't going to be called again the next time the loop function takes place. So assuming that completes correctly, then the loop function, there's nothing else here, we go on. And then in this case, in the next iteration, we see else. So we're not in the prepare state. So if we're not timing, so not is timing, it means that we're at the point where we want to start. The, so timing is the sort of the, the way I've defined it. It's the time when we tell the person to press the button and they actually press the button. So at the moment here, when not is timing, what I'm saying is that we need to prompt the person to press the button. So we delay for the random number of seconds, number of milliseconds that makes up this delay from zero to 10 seconds. Finally, after this delay is finished, we digital write the pin LED pin to high. So the red LED goes to red, it goes, it lights up. Then we set the display on the backlight of the LCD display to be red as well. So really to get the maximum performance of this, you'll see is the ever so slightly happens first, the red LED lights up before the display changes. We set the cursor to zero, zero, and we tell the person to press the button. Now, hopefully the red LED going high should be enough uh, on its own to indicate to the person to press the button. So this happens very, very quickly. So if timing is timing is true, which means now we're timing for the person, and we, we get the timer start time. So when did the timer start? So we get the current number of milliseconds since the uh, board was turned on, and we say now timer start millis, that's the current time. So we've restored that particular state. So assuming now that we're not timing because this timing is now true, otherwise, so at the next iteration loop, we're now timing the person's reaction. So nothing happens unless the person presses the button. So if they press the, the button down, this state now becomes true. The end timer milliseconds is the current time. So the difference between when we read the time here and when we read the time here is the total time it took the person to press the button. We turn off the red LED. We calculate this particular difference by subtracting the end milliseconds from the start milliseconds. We clear the LCD display. We set the cursor to zero, zero. And now here's one of my tests. If the difference is zero, now the reason I do this is because it was actually possible to cheat. You could start the timer, press the button, release the button, and then immediately press and hold the button. And if you held the button until it said the time was ready, well then it would trigger that the uh, time that you've um, taken to react is zero milliseconds. So if the difference is zero, let's assume that you're cheating or you're some sort of Superman, in which case you shouldn't be doing this test. Well, if the difference is zero, then we say print up some sort of message. In this case, I say shenanigans afoot um, to indicate that somebody's cheating. So if the difference is not zero, then we have a valid time. So in this case here, we now say, well, display green, the backlight display is green, and we say your time was and then we print out the difference. So let's say 200 milliseconds. And that displays then the time that it took the person to press the button. We delay for five seconds with that message on the screen. We, and then we reset the states and we reset the back LED to white. And in which case the whole thing starts again. So five seconds it's at later, it's forgotten all its states and we're back to the very first um, point again into the prepare state where we prompt the person to get ready to press the button. Okay, I'll just give it one more go. Press the button, wait. The red light comes on any second now. 
hit the button, oh, and 155 milliseconds. So I, that's my best time so far. Um, you can see that this circuit is hours of fun. Uh, if you want to learn how to build it, you can go through this video and also go through the previous videos related to this. So you can follow these links now to go to the previous videos. The power supply video, which set up the power supply on the left hand side of the board. The Arduino on a breadboard video, which showed you how to take and program an Arduino and place it directly on the breadboard. And finally, the Arduino LCD tutorial, which showed you how to connect an LCD module directly to the Arduino.